fit. In Surah Tawbah, verse 128, we find Allah saying there, describing the Prophet ﷺ, حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was concerned about you and compassionate and merciful to the believers. So, uh, the name Allah and Rahman are given as equivalents. And Rahman is used as a name to describe Allah in general. And it's never used to describe anyone other than Allah. Whereas Rahim is used to describe the Prophet ﷺ. And in general, when it's used in regards to Allah, it's used to describe His actions. Now, to understand uh, this name of Allah, because we said that as we strive to worship Allah through His names. As He said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah belongs all the beautiful names. So call on Him with them, worship Him through them. We said, it started by understanding the meaning of the name, then understanding it with regards to Allah's creatures. I mean, understanding the meaning in and of itself then we go to look at it with regards to Allah's creatures. And what we see in terms of the creation and Allah's mercy is that His mercy is vast. It encompasses everything. And He states that Himself in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 156, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ My mercy encompasses everything. So, whatever exists in this world, exists within the mercy of Allah. Whether we're talking about the righteous and the unrighteous people and the jinn, whether we're talking about believers or disbelievers, where in the heavens or in the earth, all creatures, all beings that have an understanding and can choose, the sentient beings, all of them function within the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, we did say, as we said before, that there is a special element of Allah's mercy which is reserved for the believers on the Day of Judgment. And that element is actually the greater element of Allah's mercy. There is a hadith uh, which Prophet Muhammad related in which he said, Indeed, when Allah created mercy, He created it in 100 parts. He kept 99 parts with Himself and released one part into the world for His whole creation. By it they have compassion and mercy among themselves. With it the wild animals have compassion for their offspring. So much so that the beast lifts its hoof from its offspring for fear of trampling it. And Allah delays 99 parts to show mercy to His servants on the day of resurrection. That is something really amazing. The greater portion of Allah's mercy is saved for the believers on the day of judgment. But what that single portion, one out of a hundred, is enough to govern and cover all aspects of Allah's creation. So much so that the wild animal will spare its offspring. With that, dear viewers, we're going to take a break and we'll be coming back to further look at this immense this tremendous attribute of Allah, the attribute of mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to Perspectives. I'm your host, Musa Maguire. There are 11 million. No, not one million, not three million, 11 million people, uh, children under five that die every year. I mean, it's mind-boggling, and nobody cares. It is an action 
uh, and the movement from the people's side. You cannot press a button and say, well, stop at this point. Well, they have been hurted, and that is a reaction. We can go to those big countries, and we tell them, you are producing this TV or this machine, and this small part of it, I can make it better, smaller, and less expensive. So while Islam would allow in vitro fertilization outside the uterus from uh, the uh, married man and woman and then implanted in the uterus of this woman. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulillah. I welcome you back, dear viewers, to our series, In the Names of Allah. And in this segment of our series, we're looking at two of Allah's names, which are related to His vast mercy, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Before the break, we looked at it from a linguistic perspective, and we began following that, to look at its general meaning with regards to Allah. And we said that the name Ar-Rahman refers to Allah's essence, whereas the name Rahim refers to, or is used to refer to, His actions. And then we started to look at the vastness of Allah's mercy. As He said, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ My mercy encompasses everything. Surah Al-A'raf, verse 156. But then Prophet Muhammad went on to elaborate on this, to give us an even deeper picture of the vastness of Allah's mercy. He said that Allah created mercy in a hundred parts. And 99 parts He kept for the believers on the Day of Judgment. And one part He sent into this world. And that one part is the basis of people uh, being compassionate with each other, loving each other, all of the love, etc., that exists in the world. So much so that even the wild animal has mercy on its offspring. It has compassion towards its offspring. And that's something that it's worth reflecting on. Um, why a wild animal, which we know is so vicious, you come in its presence, a lion or a tiger... A leopard will tear you to pieces without any hesitation. Not because it's angry at you, but that's just its nature. As a wild animal and a carnivorous animal, it will eat when its food is presented to it and it's hungry, it will eat whatever. Yet, it has offspring. And it doesn't eat its own offspring. What stops it from eating its own offspring? That's really something amazing if one just stops to think about it. And as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that the animal, those that have hoofs like a horse or uh, a camel or whatever, these are the animals, when they give birth and their offspring is small and it's drinking from them, whatever, drinking milk, you know, it is careful not to trample its offspring. What stops it from doing that? What gives it that care and concern? That same horse, if it was a wild horse, for example, you would not be able to ride it. It's not controlled. It's not uh, tame. You know, so it's wild. But with its offspring, it's careful. And that is from the one part of Allah's mercy which He has put in the world. That even the wildest of animals cares, has compassion for its offspring. Furthermore, if we look at uh, Allah's mercy from the perspective of His anger and His mercy, 